there is one huge thing that the models are disagreeing with and nobody is talking about it. We're gonna break down why the models are all over the place in this video. What's going on guys? Certified meteorologist, Jonathan Kegis. We're gonna take a look at some of those models and we're gonna really dive deep into the meteorology on why the models differ so much. Point blank, the biggest reason is we don't have a storm to track at this point. We're going to get right to the National Hurricane Center map, and you see this orange blob. That's the percentage that the Hurricane Center is giving for a storm to develop here. You see it's in that medium color, 40 to 60% there in the orange. Now, we do we are starting to get, anyway, the gyre to set up. This is going to be born out of something known as the Central American gyre. It develops in the early part and the latter stages of the season, and we're starting to get thunderstorms in both the Pacific side and the Atlantic side in the Western Caribbean now. So it's going to be a big area of rising motion. I'll show you how this works coming up a little bit later on into the video, but just know we're starting to see the signs of the bigger mechanism to eventually get into a storm. So real quick, I just want to show you some of the models getting in here. The biggest deal with this, and I want you to take, I want you to take note of that these models are going to change. I'm showing you this to make the point that I want to make on why the models are so different. So this is the uh, the GFS version from the 12Z run, the morning run, on the 20th of September. So if you're watching this late, this is from the 20th of, of September. GFS taking aim on the North Gulf Coast. Now, here's the thing, and this is what the people aren't telling you. They're not talking about the steering currents with this and other things on YouTube they're just showing you the dire solutions. Yesterday's morning run of the GFS had this thing being a historic storm coming ashore around Tampa. Okay, obviously you see the changes here. And again, until we get a storm to develop, we're just not going to know. I want to be real with you guys. I want to be transparent. I believe in that wholeheartedly to show you the forecast process. More on that rant a little bit later on in the episode here. So that was the GFS. The European is super, super weak. No one's really showing you that because they want to show you the doom and gloom. So I want to show you the weak solution here. And there's our area of low pressure. Same date on Saturday. That's going to be on uh, September 28th. That was also September 28th, by the way. But a very weak system emerging into the Bay of Campeche. Big, big differences. Here's the ICON model. It's a similar solution to the GFS. It's closer to the upper, uh, the northern Gulf Coast, upper east side of the Gulf of Mexico. And then there's the Canadian model. Again, it's on the upper Gulf Coast, but on the western side, closer to the Texas-Louisiana border. Okay, throw all of that out. I don't want you focusing on those individual model runs. At this stage in the game, ensembles are your friend those are still all over the place but you have to know why the models are doing what they're doing and that's what we're going to get into next and this is the big thing that you're not seeing out there models need to be posted with context so what we are looking at now is the 500 millibar height and anomaly okay this is going to be what is going to steer this thing if it were to be on the strong side. This is where the critical difference lies between the GFS, which has a powerful hurricane in the north or eastern Gulf Coast versus the much weaker Euro. So what we're looking at here is, you see this blue, there's going to be a nice dip in the jet stream according to the GFS. So what this dip does, it helps to grab whatever is developing down there and then lift it to the north and then send it east a little bit. So this is our big ridge of high pressure to the west over the Rockies and then our dip in the jet stream right here. That is the main steering feature. By the way, that feature right now is still west of Alaska. So that's not really even in our upper air network. So even that piece, and that is a big piece of the puzzle, is not being sampled, so the data isn't that good. So again, kind of my mini rant number two, don't freak out if you see a dire situation in your area because that is likely going to change several times over until we get the storm to develop sometime early next week. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So that is the Euro, or that is the GFS, excuse me. Look at the Euro, though. Huge, huge difference. So there's the dip in the jet stream. It's already lifting to the Great Lakes. It's not even that blue, so the anomaly isn't that high. So there it is right there. But look at this. Right here, this orange. The Euro wants to completely build a big ridge of high pressure expanding across the entire Gulf Coast and Florida, and that squashes the development. And we saw what that does to the Euro, a weak or to the system on the Euro. It has a weak system 
and it very southwest. GFS wants that trough to come here, and it lifts it up and pushes it to the east. So the surface, what we're looking at here, is going to obey what happens in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And you see there, there are critical and significant differences between the GFS, which is right here, and the European model. So through the upcoming weekend, still, if you like looking at the models, you can look at them. Sure, I'm not telling you not to look at them, but just understand that those are going to change because A, we don't have a storm, and there are significant differences between the GFS European, GFS European, and that is going to mean everything. So that is going to be the battle that we're going to watch unfold over the weekend. Which one is right with the steering pattern? It means everything for who gets what and how strong the actual storm is going to be. We're going to get back to the other weather computer now. And again, we have the makings. And by the way, this is not a track forecast. So it doesn't mean it's going this way or, or that way. That is just where the Hurricane Center believes we could have development. So it could be right here. And we're going to talk about why that is. It could be right here, right here, right here, or up here. So it's a big wide zone, and that is typical for these Central American gyre storms. Again, over the past couple of days, we haven't had anything yet down in here. Now we're starting to see the makings of the forecast coming into fruition. Uh, a lot of comments have been, why are you talking about this? We don't even have a storm. And, and okay, we, we don't, but we have uh, the major forcing mechanism coming into play and models are at least in big time agreement that we are going to have a storm. It's the strength and it is the track that is in question here. And I want to show you this again. I, I told you before that I'm all about transparency. I want to show you what we know and what as meteorologists that we're kind of looking at behind the scenes that's why I hate posting the models without context and just saying, not a forecast. Oh, here's a Cat 4 into Tampa, or here's a major hurricane into Louisiana. You can't do that, so I want to be real with you guys. All right, so here's at least how I see the forecast confidence, at least from a forecasting standpoint. I have high confidence that we're going to have a storm. I don't have it cranked all the way up, but again, we're in that medium to high zone. I do think by early next week, we are going to have something to start tracking, and then we're going to have better forecast confidence all around. The storm track confidence, though, is going to be low because the steering piece is in the Pacific Ocean, and the storm that we're going to be tracking hasn't even developed yet. As a result of that, the intensity is also going to be low on the forecast confidence side. So that is what I am thinking right now. There's just not much to track. So again, just use caution when you see stuff. Taking this out here, this is the GFS rendition. You saw where the model put it, but basically I wanted to show you this because this is what the gyre does. So we have this area, this big broad area of low pressure. You see that counterclockwise spin right here. But what I also wanna highlight is this. So what the gyre does is it spits out these lobes of low pressure, and then it's in one of those lobes is going to be our storm. So there we have it right here. We have another one right here. There's another one out here, and there's another one way out here south of Jamaica. Any one of those could develop. On this model, on the GFS, it wants to develop this storm or this piece right here. So that is what it's going to favor. That's the most dominant piece. There's even a couple of teeny tiny lobes right here that could end up pulling it back and enforcing it uh, every which way. And that's what we're going to have to watch. And that is what we're going to have to have to break down once we get the storm to develop again. And again, that's whenever we're going to have a much, much better idea in terms of where this thing is actually going to go. So again, just keep that in mind. Don't freak out um, over the weekend. Uh, enjoy the weekend because there's really not going to be much able to be ironed out until we get into the Monday and Tuesday of next week. Uh, we might start to, to see things trend one way or another as the piece of that steering mechanism gets back into 
gets back into the basin or gets gets back into the western U.S. so that it can be sampled. But nonetheless, ensembles are going to be what you want to look at. Here are the European ensembles, and a lot of agreement here that it's going into the Bay of Campeche, and that's as far as it goes out. There will be a tendency for that thing to lift further to the north. Once it gets into the Bay of Campeche, let me get you to what the GFS is saying. And again, that's the same time frame. That's through Thursday. This is the 12Z run again. You saw the its operational model go towards the North Gulf Coast. And again, these are different members. Um, each individual member is when it's a brighter orange. There's more confidence for that track. And there's still a lot of spread even for this and there's going to be because there's different initial conditions put in so that we can get the range rather than a point so that we can kind of get a gauge what's going on and you see there the messages then that's going to be through a friday through monday that's going to be september 27th through the 28th and again earlier if it comes towards florida later if it lifts to the north or west gulf coast a lot to watch um I'm confident that there's going to be a storm. It's out on social media. That is why we're talking about it because I want to be the voice of reason and, and break down the science and the meteorology and again, be transparent of what I know and what I want you guys to kind of watch in this growing weather community that I love. And if you found this informative, please hit that subscribe button. Um, would love to have you on board. Would love to have your thoughts. Uh, if you found this helpful, share it with a friend. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from because I'd love to know what the weather is doing. That's part of why this channel is here to kind of combat some of the fear and the misinformation that is out there. The thumbnails are getting crazy. And to also have the weather conversation with you guys. I know a lot of you are interested in the weather. I want to get your thoughts as well and have this conversation. So post your thoughts in the comments. Post what the weather is doing in your location. And if you found this informative and if you want to have the conversation going forward, please hit that subscribe button. We're going to keep you posted on this, uh, on this channel, on this system over the next several days until it goes away or until it makes landfall, of course. And we got you covered as we get ready to think about winter over the next couple of months. Alrighty, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Don't fall for the hype and the scare tactics, and we'll catch you soon.